A satellite is merely an object that is orbiting another body, and we have lots of satellites around Earth. The most famous one is the Moon. The Moon is Earth's satellite. It's, it's not an artificial satellite, it's a natural satellite. There's all kinds of artificial or man-made satellites that orbit the Earth. Uh, we rely on them for communications and weather, uh, global positioning, all kinds of things. So satellites are up there and they're orbiting Earth. And the question is, what keeps a satellite up? How come it doesn't fall back down? And why doesn't it just leave? So uh, to answer that question, let's consider a model of the Earth. So we've got the Earth, and when we launch a satellite into space, we launch it at a tangential velocity. So we launch it out like this. How come it doesn't keep going like that? Well, it would continue in a straight line path, except that there is a force directing it back towards the center. That force causes it to curve, and so it curves around Earth, and now it's in orbit. Well, how come it doesn't fall back to Earth? Well, the answer is it might. If it's not going fast enough, then it's just like any other projectile, and this will be a parabolic arch, and it will fall back to Earth. So if we don't shoot it fast enough, it'll fall back to Earth. Now, if we shoot it too fast, it can actually escape Earth's gravity, and it'll arc out, and it won't ever come back. And that's how we send probes into deep space, uh, go check out Saturn and, and Pluto. Uh, but if we want a satellite to orbit Earth, we send it at just the right speed to just the right height, and there's different heights we can pick depending on elevation, so that it does orbit Earth. Uh, and so the entire time it's orbiting Earth, it is actually falling back towards Earth. Um, it's curving towards Earth because gravity is pointed in the circle. It's just that it's moving so fast it falls towards Earth at the same rate Earth curves away from it. So it's falling at Earth and missing, and that's orbit. Which is interesting because it also means that uh, it's in free fall. And when things are in free fall, they experience no weight or they're weightless. And let's think about why. If you were riding in an elevator and you had uh, your bag of groceries in your hand, there's two forces that are acting on that thing. There's gravity and the normal force, right? Uh, and so those two forces balance, so it's right there in front of you. Now let's say the cable snaps, the brakes, brakes fail, and the elevator just starts plummeting to Earth. Okay? If that were the case, if you were to let go of this bag, okay, it would fall but it's already falling with everything else in the elevator, including you. So it would stay right in front of you the whole way down, right? You're both accelerating at G, you're both weightless. There is no longer a normal force. Uh, there is gravity acting on both of you, and because you will accelerate at the same rate, the apparent motion between you and the bag will be zero. So it's as if that bag is floating. Okay. Well, that's weightlessness, right? It's not that there's no weight, it's just that you are accelerating at G, there is no normal force. The only weight you feel is the normal force that pushes up against uh, gravity pulling you down. So your weight is actually more apparently your normal force. And if we eliminate the normal force, you're weightless. And so these two things fall at the same rate, nobody appears to move, it's like it's weightless. Same thing's going on over here. This thing is accelerating towards Earth at the same rate uh, of g, and so its centripetal acceleration uh, makes things appear weightless. So astronauts, when they're floating around the International Space Station, uh, it's not that they have no weight, it's just that they are falling at g, and so they appear weightless. Now we can relate the speed of an object in orbit uh, to g using centripetal acceleration, because we can say that this is a circular orbit. Now remember, r is measured from the center of the Earth, so we have the radius of the Earth plus whatever its height above Earth is to actually say how high it is. And so we know that for this object, the satellite orbiting Earth, whether it's an International Space Station or a GPS satellite, um, doesn't matter. Uh, the only force acting on it is the force due to gravity from Earth. So remember, the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, and that net force is caused by the universal gravitational force, so that would be the mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite divided by the distance between them squared times the universal gravitational constant g is equal to the mass of the object that is being accelerated in this reference frame that's the satellite so the mass of the satellite times the acceleration but the acceleration is centripetal acceleration so that would be v squared 
over r. So if we want to just figure out how fast this thing is going, uh, that's pretty easy. The mass of the satellite doesn't matter. It's in every term. It cancels out. Uh, and so I get the mass of the Earth times g divided by r squared equals v squared over r. Now I can multiply both sides by r, and when I do that, it cancels that square. So I get mass of the Earth times the universal gravitational constant g divided by r equals v squared, or I can square root that and get v. So we know how fast an object is going. It only depends on the mass of the Earth and its location or its height uh, above Earth or the center of Earth. Okay. Um, and we can put satellites at different positions and change their velocities. So we have satellites that are near Earth orbit, like the International Space Station is actually fairly close to the Earth's surface, it's only a couple hundred kilometers up, uh, where we have uh, geosynchronous satellites which are much further above the surface of the Earth. Uh, and so if we want them to be farther above, if they have a greater radius, then they will, they will have a, a lower velocity.